Oh God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Shoulders, knees and toes, knees, knees and, and toes. toes. Something, something, oh Tommy God. knee. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy shin, butthole, whatever. <laughs> oh, the Six Little Chickies song? The Six Little Chickies song was honestly great. Yeah. This is terrible form, but I All hate of the that music basket. in that. I mean, okay, the birthday song made me want to fucking die and murder. I mean, I think that was the point of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it was made to infuriate me. <laughs> Serial killers. It really gets them going. <laughs> well, hey, cheers to us for actually making it to the end of season one. A year. More than a year. I guess that's true. We have had two 9 11 recordings. Speaking of travesties, welcome back to Cage Match Colon Around About Way, meeting Nicolas Cage. I'm your host, Sean, here with my co host. I'm Nick. And our producer, Peter. Hello. And this is an auspicious episode where, because this is the wrap up of our first round through the bracket. Yeah. Of our initial bracket, this is the end. We, we still haven't met Nicolas Cage. I know. You know, I was really excited the other day. I was watching a movie and I was like, oh man. Uh, I was watching the credits as I do and I was like, oh, that name, that looks familiar the like cage's hairdresser from the movie and i was like fuck so i look it up and i'm like oh shit this guy's done a ton of nicholas cage's hair like tons of movies and i was like oh we should totally look for this guy and i was like oh he's dead oh Aww. damn it i would have loved to have talked to nick cage's hairdresser i bet he's got a million stories to tell yeah i just want to hear about that flow so on this podcast we have watched 64 nicholas cage films with the plan to whittle this down cage match style hey so one one ca- one is that, is that where the name came from mm, finally no. makes sense it's like 32 episodes yeah we're just finding the best one most scientifically through argument <laughs> some would call it debate uh, they have not been through a high school debate class then we we barely meet the threshold for civilized conversation <laughs> all right willie's wonderland all right all right <laughs> it's your birthday and we want you to have fun it's your birthday correct me if i'm wrong because it's been a wild week uh the composer was also the writer and director i believe so yeah Yeah. okay all the songs in this except for the one licensed song <laughs> all kind of slap i know i really wish that they had done something like if they had just done a willie's wonderland cover of Freebird, <laughs> that would have been fucking killer Oh, that but, would have been astounding. But just putting like straight up Freebird in there, it's like, ah, I don't know. I don't know. That's the second time we've seen Nicolas Cage and Freebird on screen together. And what was the other one? Uh, Connor. Oh, duh. Yeah. I thought you were setting up a birdie joke. Nope. <laughs> 34 episodes is apparently where we run out of jokes. Uh, I That's two a- episodes away. We're good. <laughs> 32 episodes is where we run out of jokes. <laughs> Willie's Wonderland, Nicolas Cage plays a guy yep. whose car gets uh, totaled, not totaled, but the <laughs> tires get uh, taken out from under him and he gets towed to uh, Podunk Nowhere and thousand dollars cash to fix his car. Yeah, so it doesn't have internet or uh, ATMs. ATMs or takes credit card since no one has cash anymore. They offer him the deal if he goes and cleans up the old Willy's Wonderland. Uh... <laughs> goes and cleans up old Willy's Wonderland. Gross. Yeah. Hold on. Let me see if I can I do this. Said, Have your way with me, boys. <laughs> I already said there's not a penis in this movie. <laughs> this wrap up is perfect. Is it? Hold on. Try this one. Nicholas Cage is fucking ripping around in a Corvette out in like dirt ass roads. Nobody to stop him. Just fucking freedom everywhere when all of a sudden he just slams into a spike strip that some piece of shit little kid left out, totally putting all of his tires out. When a tow truck comes and gets him, he slams down some sick ass punch pop soda and the tow truck driver's like, well, we'll get you taken care of while he gnaws on a fucking Slim Jim just hanging out of his mouth like a cigar. Yeah, I thought it was a cigar for the longest Forgot time. About this no, it was just one thick ass sausage hanging in his mouth. So he takes him Ooh, back and he's my. like, oh, it's going to you're going to need new tires. And 
oh, I better do this engine work too. This is going to be a thousand bucks. And Nick Cage just stares at him again. Nick Cage hasn't said a word. He's just like a monolith of strength and virility. Virility. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah, that guy fucks for sure. Then we're introduced to Tex McAdoo, who's going to let Nick Cage clean Willie's Wonderland in exchange for the repairs of his car. Willie's Wonderland being a Chuck E. Cheese ripoff. Uh, that has seen better days. <laughs> yeah, uh, beyond just the, the dirt and what could be bloodstains all over everything and the graffiti on all the walls, it's just absolutely neglected like animatronics table like the place is a shithole so tex is like go ahead and like you set your stuff down and here's a t-shirt now you're officially an employee and that gets no rise from nick cage but he puts the shirt on and he puts his soda in the fridge because he brought a burlap sack full of soda with him did you see the uh, the tagline on the soda a fistful of caffeine to your kisser. <laughs> That's fucking great. That yeah. is a good one. Um, I found uh, Punch Pop koozies online. And I was like, oh, man, I kind of want one of those. And then I was like, I have a very important question. This is something that we've never talked about. And it might end our friendship. Because <laughs> I know you're an Oregonian. <laughs> okay. What do you say? Soda. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Wait, is Oregon usually a pop state? Where well, the, uh, where I lived, it was. Yeah. Yeah, Midwest was pretty pop-centric. It's wrong. I agree. I don't like it. All right, we can still be friends. We can continue this podcast. <laughs> Woo! So he puts all his shit in the fridge and whatnot and, like, gets to cleaning. There's these kids that try, like... Cut to outside. Cut to exterior. Willie's Wonderland. Some kids, like, try to burn this shit down earlier, and, like, one of them gets arrested, and then her punk-ass friends, like, help break her out of her trailer home and where the sheriff handcuffed her to the radiator. Who's her stepmom. Yeah. So this has every element of yeah. a good porno. They break her out, and, like, everybody goes to Willie's Wonderland to, like, burn the place down and supposedly save the dude who's inside even though they immediately start just dumping gas on everything again and they go to light it dumb yeah but yeah uh, those kids oh, were, we'll get into how dumb they are <laughs> they are like the epitome of dumb horror movie kids uh smoking weed outside the haunted amusement restaurant yeah. it's like the rule if you you know commit sin or whatever in a yeah horror movie you're definitely gonna die definitely gonna die or you know the blonde bimbo and the black kid they're just like we're in this horrifying place <laughs> might as well fuck yeah a super happy fun room the guy who wanted to be her boyfriend um what was his sin just being a fucking Punk ass buster <laughs> being a uh, fuck. yeah he was weak he was he was just a piece of shit well and i mean the one guy who gets the first kid who dies i mean he has like two lines which which is the first kid to die? I don't remember. Is, he gets is it... killed by Nighty Night. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's 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 run quickly through the menagerie of seven animatronic fuckheads. We have Willie the Weasel, Artie the Alligator, Siren Sarah, Cammy the Chameleon, Gus Gorilla, Nighty Night, Ozzy the Ostrich, and Tito the Turtle. Yeah. <laughs> the only one with an accent. <laughs> A somewhat offensive one. <laughs> But he was a good turtle. He was. He was my favorite. <laughs> yeah, fifth Ninja Turtle right there. <laughs> Tito, Tito. With his mustache and his uh -huh. sombrero. <laughs> he, didn't get, he didn't get invited out to very many ninja fights, but, no. but he was there. So yeah, Nick Cage is locked in this place. He, uh, his credited name is The Janitor. Outside of some like wild grunting while doing his uh, mechanical murdering, and pinball. And pinball. And soda drinking. He and always so had a... <sighs> but no spoken dialogue. So probably mute. It's the only thing reason he doesn't have a cell phone. I think he's just too tough for words. <laughs> I, I buy that as well. Yeah. When the tow truck driver's just like, yeah, we don't got no internet here. They are going to put it in. But then they didn't. And then later, all the kids have cell phones. Well, one kid has a cell phone to call the sheriff with. Shut so they have cell towers. Yeah, I was going to say they're... Yeah, totally different. Different things. <laughs> <laughs> you can use the internet through over cellular. Well, yeah, I suppose that's true. But can you run an ATM off of an off of a cell phone? But what if they all only got three G? 
if That's they were like ew. stuck back in that world. Yeah. <laughs> you Gross. shut your mouth. Not even LTE. They're Gross. just like, ugh. Good luck downloading porn on that. Impossible. That's why you have rampant teen fucking. <laughs> so Nick Cage takes the whole like take your break thing seriously because he's cleaning for a bit. Watch goes off, goes and has a punch pop, discovers this old uh, Willy's Wonderland pinball machine, starts to clean it off, gets his beat back, goes back out. And then like every time he turns around, there's an ostrich a little closer to him. Gives it a couple slaps, and then the ostrich comes to life. <laughs> that ostrich scene was my favorite murder, I think, just because it's the first, and it kind of sets the tone. And I loved how he just sort of, like, boops him in the, in the like, tummy. And yeah. It's like, <laughs> and, well, it's also the most interesting, because the ostrich is, like, the only one that's clearly not just a guy in a suit. It's uh, actually a guy in a suit. I mean, yeah. But, he like, they green screen his body out, and he's got a puppet stick that he handles the head with well i mean it just moves like uh, everything else is just like a mascot costume yeah like the head is stable yeah the neck wiggles yeah. and then the body just kind of jiggles around his body but like nick cage you know kills it with a broom mm -hmm. oh he breaks it in half yeah. and then like ninja Stabs sticks it, it. yeah skills he's learned from movies such as jujitsu <laughs> <laughs> but then like Get off my piano <laughs> uses duct tape to like fix the cut on his face that the ostrich gave him and then proceeds just to go about his day. <laughs> yeah. He goes right back to cleaning. He bags up the First ostrich. Thing I would do is dismantle each and every one of those things. Well, the other ones haven't done anything to him. That's true. They haven't even said that they wanted to eat his face. And the amount of time he spends killing is time taken away from cleaning. He's very like single minded, but I appreciate the way he just approaches this entire situation of, well, I'm here to clean this entire place. Shit's going to fall apart, but God damn it, I'm going to clean this place and go home with my car. Because he wasn't going to let his car, like, get taken away. He was going to hold up on his end of this deal. That's fair. I mean, his car was on the line. Yeah. All right. You sold me. I'm back I, I did like the uh, the cleaning scene in the bathroom that, like, kind of drugged out fast forwardy. Oh, yeah. You know, our like, next one with uh, yeah. Gus Gorilla. Gus Gorilla. <laughs> so the animatronics are alive. And we find out later that there was a pact with Satan to transfer the soul of serial killers into the animatronics. As you do. A classic satanic serial killer animatronics pact. There is a <laughs> halfway through this I film. I know where else to go with that one. <laughs> halfway through this film, there's an extreme exposition dump. Mm -hmm. Which is the only dump you get in this <laughs> movie, because otherwise it's all hard ons and like good times. It's awesome. The birthday song starts up again which gets him to leave the bathroom when he comes back in. We'll eat your soul or you will die is written in blood on the uh, yeah, yeah, mirror. Yeah. And then the doors start closing on their own. So do they possess like evil magic as well? Uh, yeah, I would assume like, I mean. And why don't they use more of it? Uh, they might just have limited ability uh, based on the amount of technology that their bodies are built on. There's not enough organic matter to like harness good satan powers so you can like poltergeist an arm and close a door yeah but you yeah all right so we're going with the uh, shadow run rules the more of your body you give up the less magic yeah. you can tap into yeah exactly like that well one of them is playing hide and seek with <laughs> nicholas cage in the bathroom i know this appeals to you <laughs> it does this is a shadow run podcast now all right <laughs> no it's not <laughs> fuck shadow run it's the worst system ever and then he like opens all the bathroom stalls nothing there except the gorilla that just Jumps down from the roof. Yeah, I love the way he just sort of apparates above <laughs> and like swings down. And have you ever swung on the like door thingy? There's usually like a sharp ridge on the top. That's not comfortable to like swing around on. Got gorilla hands, though. And yeah. robot gorilla hands. Robot yeah. gorilla hands. That's probably what also, does it. Also, my the line that gets me every time. <laughs> gorilla greetings. <laughs> And then, for my money, the best fight scene in this whole movie, because it really uses the space. A plunger comes into play at one point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he plunges uh, Gus right in the mouth. <laughs> and, and Gus is the only one No, Tito later begs for mercy, too, but Gus is, <laughs> Gus is just like, wait, what? No, we can, we can talk about this. <laughs> yeah. As he gets his jaw, like, bit into the urinal and head kicked in. Yeah, it's definitely a little curb stomp American History <laughs> X situation there. Yeah. Ugh. It was no good. Uh, it was a great fight, but yeah. it's not how you want to go out no. chewing on a urinal cake. Oh. But that was a good one. 
bags up uh bags up Gus, throws him in the corner, goes mm-hmm. about his business. Yeah. So now we're two animatronics down, and this is where the kids end up getting into the place because they're trying to warn Nick Cage, and he kind of blows them off uh when they try to talk to him through the window but they get up on the roof like uh i don't know live whatever the anna kendrick wannabe character <laughs> emily tosta yeah she uh gets in and she's running around and nick cage is like well i got no time for you and then all of her dumb he ass says it friends, with his eyes. yeah then all of her friends fall through the roof because they get into a tussle and the place isn't structurally sound so they fall into the ball pit Classically, all fell perfectly into the ball pit, Which, even though yeah. they were at various different points in the ceiling. That yes. would have also the been the perfect time for the alligator attack in the ball pit. Oh, that would have been great. The ball pit does not play enough of a role in this film. It plays zero role aside from, like, fall arresting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's on the poster. Well, I mean, with a name like Willy's Wonderland, you gotta have a ball pit. So, all these kids are in there now. They're all arguing then Willie busts into the best song, in my opinion, of six little chickens in the end of the line, six little chickens and all do fine, or whatever, however it goes. But it's fucking awesome. That's a good one. And it's just got like a really good kind of rhythm and beat. And then it just gets real sinister as it's like, oh, he's just talking about all these kids that are going to get eaten in the weasel pen. And that's great. Two of them already run off. What for fucking? Yeah, yeah. The slutty chick, and well, that's slut shaming. Uh, the chick who gives it out yeah, willingly. She's promiscuous. That's her one character trait. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she knew how to um, get out of handcuffs. Yeah, using a bobby pin, which is not very practical, but cinematically great. So they go off to the super happy fun room to have some super happy fun. The other kids are all there, and hear this song and then out of nowhere nighty night like just pops up behind the weakest of them all and the one with the least amount of lines yeah because he's about to get a sword stuffed right through his chest and it's like the fattest like like cloud strike foamest looking sword like this thing's almost a foot wide in like thickness so he gets fucking taken out they so, got him real bad in the tum tum yep uh yeah so nick cage comes back from break and, and grabs nighty night sword and off with his head yeah uh never see that sword again you might want to hold on to that no way dude even when he had a knife he gave the knife away he doesn't need a weapon i mean he'll use broom handles and uh, a yeah. burlap sack full of soda but he, he's not about like taking an un, undue advantage he's yeah. gonna give these animatronics every amount of chance they have yeah so we have the two fucking in the super happy fun room oh yeah which get taken out by the alligator. Yeah, they get gatored. They get gatored. They get gator. Bite one of their heads off. They get gator while they're fucking, because he gets closer. The chameleon is in the arcade with uh, the wimpy kid that wants to be Liv's boyfriend. Uh, Siren and Tito. Oh, they got the other, like, nerdier looking kid. Yeah, there's the, the nerdy black guy. They get him. Mm-hmm. And then the incel dude gets it from the chameleon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She... And he had the he had the weakest one because she like just roped him with her tongue and like broke his neck yeah, that way. Yeah, like, Liv runs weak. in right then. Oh, that's one. Like, yeah, he hands her the knife at that point. Yeah, like, just like Liv runs beep, beep, in. Beep, beep. Yeah, <laughs> Nick Cage is there, puts his dukes up, watch goes off, looks at it, just hands Liv back her own knife <laughs> and walks away. Yeah. That was just so good. <laughs> and he, I'm assuming it's a 15 minute break, so Liv's fighting with this chameleon for 15 minutes, cuts its tongue off. And then he comes back in and finishes it. No, he doesn't finish it, but he, like, saves her. It's soon. He finishes it with Siren yeah. and Sarah later. Because but... they have their menage a trois. Well, he, he wraps it up and, like, chokes it out, and it's presumed dead, but yeah. it disappears and comes back later. The kids are, like, trying to, like, get out of the room, and they, like, weakly try the door and whatever, and then Liv is there. She's like, oh, my God, they're inside. We, we got to get to them. And Nick Cage... Like dragging the carcass of the chameleon or whatever at that point, just puts it down and just boots the door in. And the door just like does this sick, like floppy fly right into the room. (laughs) But it's so good. (laughs) So we come, like, they call the cops, the one cop, the sheriff who shows up with her backup cop, with her backup cop from out of town. That's when we find out that the sheriff and you know, is also in on this, that the whole town's in on it. And Ken is like, you know, get back in there. You got to die. 
has the other cop take Liv, arrest Liv, drive off, who then gets killed by Tito. <laughs> Which is just great. One of your favorite uh, fight scenes, if I rem- or scenes, if I remember correctly. That is correct. That is a great fight scene. Yeah. Tito gets his uh, <laughs> balls uh, that he says he has smashed in with the butt of a... Uh, <laughs> The shotgun. shotgun. Yeah. He just gets fucking whipped with <laughs> until he passes out. He just gets beaten the balls till he blacks out. Uh and he begs for mercy the yeah. whole time. So good. Uh that- just like a turtle. <laughs> so eventually the cop brings Nick Cage back to Willie. Willie kills the cop, then like proceeds to like beat the shit out of Nicolas Cage. Leaves him for dead in the ball pit. Though supposedly has to eat people. Yeah, they're tenderizing balls. <laughs> so I would say for all the actual fun, stupid action in this film, the Willy fight is so lame. Slow motion, like wide swings. The Willy suit, I don't think, lends itself well to oh, fighting. None of them actually did. The, uh, the fight choreography really boils down to shaky cam. And that's how they achieved any yeah. kind of action. But the gorilla was fun. The ostrich was fun. Those are the best fights yeah. for sure. Well, then the only one that he doesn't kill is uh, Siren Sarah. Right, but she blows herself up when she blows up the car. Yeah. With uh, Tex McAdoo. Tex McAdoo. Second best name in the movie. Because, yeah, uh, the next day. What's the best one? Tito Turtle? Could be. Whatever the serial killer's name was, because he got a sweet three-name name. name. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. A a real Bart Harley Jarvis. (laughs) Yeah, he's a real Bart Harley Jarvis. (laughs) <laughs> jerry robert willis oh jerry yeah, robert good. willis that's a good one all in all this movie um real light on plot it's a you know it's a horror comedy it's if nothing else inspired heavily by five nights at freddy's yeah. and just uh like Chuck E. cheese culture yeah you know satanism and stuff <laughs> But it's a, I don't know, I I really enjoyed this movie, obviously, because it is just so dumb. And you just like, you just let everything go and you let the movie be the movie. It's short. It's like an hour and 25 minutes or some shit. I mean, it moves well. It's like you, you're full of like stuff happening. There's the, and there's that awesome dance scene. Nick Cage dancing and playing pinball. Yeah, yeah, that he apparently improv the entire scene. (laughs) That was originally supposed to be a a, like an arcade game, but they realized it was just going to be cheaper to make a custom pinball machine. (laughs) So they went that way. I mean, the movie cost five million dollars and it did not do well because it it was COVID. Yeah, it released right when everything shut down. So real tough sell there. But Uh, how much of that do you think went to licensing Freebird? I was looking that up. Obviously, they're not going to just post it online. Um, But typically, a song for a movie would be like under $60,000 for something of that scale, like a classic rock thing. That's way lower than I actually thought. Yeah. Yeah. But we're going to use all our Patreon money to get Freebird. Five seconds of Freebird. (laughs) We're going to. Very last episode. (laughs) Don't even try that. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, they'll come for us. So this is a rough one in terms of talking about like Cage's performance because he just has his one. He has his poster stare for this whole movie. Pretty much. Yeah, he kinda, he, he's very stoic. The, the left side of the lip kind of sticks out just enough. That's his look for the whole movie. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And beating ah, shit. Yeah. And playing pinball. Yeah. And drinking soda. Yeah. And drinking soda. I, I do love his physicality in this movie. Mm-hmm. Like he's not. Like he's, you know, getting up there in years and they obviously didn't go crazy with like choreography or anything. But like the way he slams those sodas and like crushes the can and throws it in the garbage and just the way he like moves and stuff. He's very self-sure because he's in like decent shape in this, too. He's no slouch in this film. Well, he did, you know, give himself a duct tape girdle at one point, too. But even before that, he was still like just in the T-shirt. I'm like when he's just mopping, I'm like, you're not schleppy. Yeah, because Pig came out not that long after this, and he is definitely lumpier. That's true. So, yeah, I mean, what would you say? Good cage, good movie, good, bad, bad, good, good. <laughs> well, it's definitely a bad good, movie. Bad. <laughs> um, and I'm here for it. Yeah. Uh, it's a bad movie in the best way. Yeah. It's a great performance. Yeah. With what he's given, like, if you're doing a horror comedy movie that probably only had, like, 
a weekend's worth of writing involved in it. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. And that's if they were like running out of cocaine or something. I don't know. But uh, it's <laughs> it's not a good movie, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah. I still like this theory that like there is a series of Nick Cage films. This theory is my own where there's a series of Nick Cage films where he's just playing like the same guy just starting at Red Rock West. Just a guy rocks into a, a town, <laughs> solves its problem. Red rocks into a town. Red rocks into a town, solves its problem. Red rocks right back out. And this fits that mold. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. He is not here to get involved with everybody else's problems. He's the, just uh, like, I just want my fucking bitchin Camaro or Corvette. Or, it was a Camaro, I think. Uh, uh, who fucking I don't know. I'm not a fucking not, car guy. Yeah. <laughs> I have a theater listen, degree. Yeah, listen to our gun in 60 seconds. <laughs> so you know we don't know shit. It, he has a blue car. I was blue. I know colors. And he wants it back. So unofficial sequel to Red Rock West. Sure. sure. What was what was your other one? Uh, Looking Glass. That one. <laughs> just got, just random guy just driving down the road, buys a motel. Weird shit happens. He leaves. Yeah. Like dips his toe in being a pervert and <laughs> is like, mm, no, murders. Yeah. No, thanks. <laughs> I mean... I mean, I guess you could start with the toe as a pervert. <laughs> Ew, not for me. You're not into shrimping? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm into shrimp, but not <laughs> shrimping. Uh, so I, I worked with this guy. He was a dance instructor, but he was working for the lighting company I worked at. <laughs> he used to always talk about like, oh, man, you know what I'm into? You know what I'm into, dudes? I like to get with like ballerinas, like dancers and stuff who are up on their feet all the time. I fucking suck those toes. <laughs> and he, I'm pretty sure he was just doing it to fuck with us because he's married and stuff. And he's like, I'll get I'll get in there. And I won't get off those toes until they're white and wrinkly. Boys, I'm they're going to look like little bay shrimp when I'm done. With those <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm permanently off shrimp now. <laughs> I know you managed to ruin shrimp for me and Sean. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. You guys are going to have to like bounce back real fast for Vegas. I know. <laughs> Now it is mission shrimp possible. <laughs> I'm going to talk about it too. I'm going to send you pictures of like sucked upon no. toes. <laughs> Maybe I'll find somebody we're, who's letting who will like, take getting, a video with me and I'll, I'll let them suck on my toes and I'll suck on their toes. It'll be a toe 69. We're going to get straight off that plane, go straight to uh, the wing and just not look at our phones till we're, we're, yep. we're fully shrimped. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a shrimp. But to oh, be clear, oh. these guys are not staying at the win. They're just eating the wind shrimp. Yes. You're, you're allowed to eat other places. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're not supposed to shit where you eat. <laughs> Good point. All right. What do you guys think about quotes for this one? I know it's impossible to do any sort of Nick Cage quote. Did you have any other quotes that stood out or were amusing? I mean, I liked Gorilla Greetings. Yeah, yeah. that's a good one. I did really enjoy uh, Ozzy Ostrich's like, I'm going to feast on your face. That was pretty good. Liv knocks on the door and tries to get him to pay attention. She's like, you're going to die. You're going to fucking die. They're going to kill you. And he just like walks away. <laughs> and then she says, um, God, I'm trying to help him understand that he's going to die in here, but he won't listen. <laughs> like, yep. I thought maybe he was deaf. <laughs> that would have been great at the end. He just does full sign language to her. No, he, yeah, he's he just def definitely doesn't care. He's too cool for this problem, is my opinion. So I like to think that Nick Cage's character in this at one point was a mascot of something. That's my uh, headcanon uh, background for this character. Is like he was a mascot that, you know, is on the run for <clears throat> something he did. Or he's an Imagineer who just has, you know, had, he's just had too much. True. <laughs> Abe Lincoln once came to life and tried to kill him. <laughs> he, that's how he gained his skills. And hopefully that's what got rid of It's a Small World. That's still around, isn't it? Yeah. I think so, yeah. Fuck. I, maybe the Hall of Presidents has gone. I don't know. No, no, that's still there because they did the uh, the whole Trump one is is just a, a reskin on Hillary Clinton because they really thought she was going to win. <laughs> so huh. he, he's got some some very interesting lips. I thoroughly enjoyed the ride of this film. I enjoyed it both times I watched it. I mean, it's such an easy movie to watch. Yeah. You don't have to pay attention. Like, yeah. You know Look exactly up, what's going on. Something funny is going to happen. I love the way he did takedowns because he was always like, with the ostrich, he like reaches in and tears its like mechanical spine out. It's yeah. just spraying like motor oil all over him. And 
with the alligator. He like pries its mouth open and like just shoves his hand in there and like rips out the back of its throat. It's very like, yeah, it's like old Kung Fu movie in like, or Roadhouse. It's yeah. just like in Roadhouse when Patrick Swayze tears that guy's throat out. Oh God, it's such a good movie. Yeah, so gnarly. <laughs> But we didn't have a monster truck in this one. That would have been cool. That would have been cool. Instead of getting his fucking sweet car back. Oh, if they if just Tex lifted McAdoo it. McAdoo had like, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then he has to drive that lifted Camaro, that blue car. Just lifted. straight over Tito Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Willy's Wonderland. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hard to transition off of that one. <laughs> How'd that get that, you, Nick? <laughs> I don't know. That's just such a hard yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh our second film this week is 1998 snake eyes which i was shocked to see that date after watching this film Why? this has got some severe post 9 11 vibes oh yeah oh yeah that's true nick cage play uh, this this movie could also be a prequel to um bad lieutenant because nick cage plays a shit cop at a boxing match who a secretary of defense gets assassinated and his best friend Gary Sinise is, was the bodyguard who was away from his post and Nick Cage has to solve the murder to save his friend. Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> I just had to say. No, no, he's Commander Kevin Dunn. No. <laughs> Commander Dunn. You got it. <laughs> There's an actor in this movie also uh, also Kevin Dunn. Yes. Except without an E. Correct. Yes. I like Kevin Dunn. Yeah. Did you guys watch Veep? No. Oh man, that's a fucking good show. He's a good character on there. Also, um, there's a character that God, I cannot think of the actor, but it's the guy from the um, baby of the year competition. Oh, the, yeah. The host for that. Oh, OK. Sam. He plays other. like a, a full on hazy dude on that show. And he's so good. His name is Richard Splett. <laughs> awesome. He's a he's a good actor. Have you watched any of uh, the after party? No. The first season is just like an after party after the uh, high school reunion everybody's coming back and like at the after party, somebody gets murdered and at each episode ends up being like each person's point of view, but they're all told from their perspective in like separate film styles. So like one person's story is told as a romantic comedy and next one is like film noir and stuff like that. That's actually kind of cool. It's pretty cool. You somehow managed to kind of loop this back into this movie. Yeah. Because this whole movie is Nick Cage trying to solve this murder for his friend and getting different people's stories and having to piece it all together. That actually was your best segue ever. It was. You did it. 32 episodes. Woo! What'd I do? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> It'll never happen again. It's fine. <laughs> Everybody, every, we'll, we'll put a warning at the beginning <laughs> of the episode. They'll know when to skip it. What you're talking about, Sean, I think was actually my favorite part because I, I watched this and I texted Nick after like 40 minutes of it yeah. and I had to stop watching that night and I was like, this movie is kind of fucking good. Like, I love this multi perspective kind of thing. And then they don't do it anymore. They start it. So it all takes place at a boxing match. Nick Cage is there. And the first thing that puts him on the case is the, bo uh, the boxer you bet on, the heavyweight champ goes down. As soon as the gunshot light goes off, like his head sh uh, shoots up. And Nick Cage is like, that guy didn't get knocked out. He's who my money was on. And that's, he goes to interview him. There is a very nice touch where once Nick Cage realizes he's going to be on the news because he wants to run for mayor one day, he needs a nicer, not shitty shirt to be like shot in. So anytime they do filmed, a flat, filmed in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Good point. Anytime they do a flashback and he's in like the paisley like the shirt. yellow shirt the yellow shirt you know it's a flashback that shirt is also so sick like it had so <laughs> many good elements like did you notice on the back of the collar the collar like will come to like a point and then like yeah. back out ah, that the was a good shirt, shirt. i'd wear the shit out of that i Absolutely. loved that shirt the shirt wasn't the problem it's like the leather dress jacket <laughs> that's the problem i don't know that was a pretty good jacket too um, this is a jacket that represents personal freedom Sean. <laughs> i mean personal freedom to have an affair and yell at his wife because he's not, you know, about pizza. <laughs> oh, man. What was that line when he's talking about his, uh, like, uh, Dunn's like, oh, how's, I don't remember his wife's name, Stacy. And he's like, oh, Stacy, oh, fat, happy, I love her. And 
He's like, no, 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 not her. The other one. Oh, Monica, skinny, angry. I love her. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, I love the character he brings in this because mm-hmm. he's just like he's Atlantic City. Yeah. I mean, this is where it's taking place. He's just like During wheeling and storm. dealing. Yeah, there's a tropical storm, Teresa or some shit going on. And he's just like he's having a blast. He's like at the fight. He's got his good buddy from back in the day in town who got him like front row seats at the yeah. fight the boxer is the like from the same school as him so like he's always constantly trying to like meet him and talk about whatever fucking uh mascot they had uh and i mean you see like oh he chases down uh louise guzman or whatever yeah. and shakes and, him down yeah because he's apparently a drug dealer and like that's his only part like 30 seconds of movie there um but he takes his money and breaks all of his drugs and tells him like that's well, the that's the cost of yeah. doing business. Well, he's in one of the flashbacks too. Yeah, of the same scene. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> the lead up to that scene. Yeah, I'm still mad at Luis Guzman because he owes me money. <laughs> like legitimately, he tipped me no dollars oh. when he came in with his family to a Chili's in West Springfield, Massachusetts. <laughs> I got fucked by Luis Guzman. <laughs> oh man. I bet he enjoyed the shit out of those baby back ribs that night, too. He probably got, like, I don't know, Southwest poppers or some shit. <sighs> so, <laughs> the crux <laughs> of this film is it tries to, like, do the three-point-of-view thing. It's Rashomon, for any film buffs out there. Well, okay, it it's, wanted to it be. It wanted to be. The thing is, nobody ever lies. There's no, like... It would have been cool if he had to piece the mystery together, but after the second flashback, which is uh, Gary Sinise's flashback... Of him killing the terrorist, we just find out that Gary Sinise like set up this whole thing. Yeah, like, we learn he's the bad guy at about the twenty-five minute mark. <laughs> it's a little bit further than that, but uh, in, in a two-hour movie, you've got about like an hour and twenty minutes of knowing the entire conceit to the movie. Yeah, while Nicolas Cage still has to like piece it together up until about like the last. I don't know, 45 minutes, 40 minutes of the yeah. movie. But it just makes for a real painful like half hour of like, oh, God, I'm doing this. And like, we have to listen to Gary Sinise say his lines with that stupid face of his. He does have a stupid God face. Damn it. It is dumb, isn't it? It looks too short. <laughs> like somebody sat on his head. Well, and <laughs> As a younger man, too, it looks even weirder. Oh, yeah. Oh, when he has that hippie hair and he's all Ironsides and Forrest Gump. Right. Yeah. 40, the first 40 minutes of the movie is like, this movie's really good. Yeah, and his then energy they, is just popping. And and what, but once they kind of give up the uh, give up the ghost, is that the frame? <laughs> ghost or goat? I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Josie's going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, Josie, drop it in the comments. <laughs> Please do. This is uh, the line share all over again. But once the, like, once they give uh, give that up, it's just like, what's, like, what are the stakes now? He's trying to save the uh, the informant. Well, he doesn't even know, like from the beginning that it is an informant yeah. situation it's i mean the it's carla gugino gugino how do you say her name Whew, i couldn't see her name past that huge ass cleavage <laughs> oh, man yeah, that's, she... how you, that's how you distract them <laughs> catch uh, them looking not gonna lie like it was big big honkers i <laughs> okay sorry two <laughs> two stories so uh big honker has a very specific <laughs> reference for my family now because anytime cora takes a big shit because she's always really backed up she'll just poop and then she'll go big honker (laughs) i think that's the first time you've ever name checked your kid on the uh, podcast that's true we'll uh, see how i edit that out or in i don't know and then i remember seeing when did sin city or not was it sin city that's the that's the black and white frank Frank miller Miller. when did that come out 20... 2004 or something 2004 2005 something in that window it was after high school i know that yeah after high school but enough that i was still like horny and <laughs> i remember she takes off her top in that and i was like damn that is a 2005 that's a hot ass woman so a secretary of defense is killed supposedly because of they're testing out like a missile system yeah, yeah. some missile de- defense system yeah and Which they've been giving false false test results. Test for. results, yeah. And the sen- or the secretary was gonna like probably vote it down because he was getting you know getting pressure from the libs. Well, if he knew that it didn't work, then he wouldn't have allotted government yeah. money for it. But they already said he was kind of like on the fence about it. 
And okay, fine, I guess. It doesn't really have anything to do with anything. But what muddies it even more is there's, after Gary Sinise kills his two cohorts in this assassination. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Nick Cage knows too much and he can't kill his friend because his friend's his alibi. After he kills his two cohorts, he meets with the guy who's trying to open this casino. The yeah, arena's going to be thread. coming a casino who we see around, but I don't think has a lot of lines. But there's this whole other thing where they need to sell the missile system to get money to finish the casino to fund something else. Like it get like there's so much needless extra plot to this film. Yeah, that guy's, oh, yeah, that yeah. guy's played by John Hurd, who was probably most famously the dad from Home Alone. Mm. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, he's Kevin definitely... McAllister's dad. Yeah, yeah. This movie tries to go too deep. It it really wants to be the Manchurian Candidate yeah. and like have some real thick like government conspiracy shit going on, but it's never gonna be that. I mean, for one, you got Nick Cage, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> suck it, Manchurian Candidate. I mean, Nick Cage would probably do a remake yeah, of Manchurian Raymond Candidate. Shaw. <laughs> yeah, another Manchurian Candidate. But with Nick Cage, it'd be great. Yeah. I haven't seen the original in a really long time. It's really good. I was upset when I bought the Denzel one because I accidentally bought it in full screen, not widescreen. Mm. Mm. That's know, unwatchable now. It was real rough to right. put that on and be like, ah, the, the lines are on the wrong side of the TV. I had a girlfriend once. What? To- Congratulations. I only brought two bottles of champagne. I had a girlfriend Muzzle once. Tub. <laughs> Smash. I had a girlfriend once trying to do something nice for me. Like when I first started dating, bought me a, a copy of a Sam Raimi Spider-Man on DVD, but bought me the full screen edition. Oh. I did break up with her shortly after. Good. You Partially right because thing. of that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can go home and hate myself. That's fine. I got that in spades. <laughs> What were we talking about? All right. So, I mean, like, we did okay, the so, in-depth plot line of Willy's Wonderland, and we are not hitting on any of the plot line of the so movie that has a plot. Sinise <laughs> is trying to, like, <laughs> track down this woman who turns out to be an informant who's going to tell the senator about the fake missile tests. Mm-hmm. That's why... He, fake muzzle tough. <laughs> that's why the senator... That's why the uh, defense sec- secretary was killed, and she was shot because they were trying to assassinate her as well. They hired a terror a known terrorist to pull off the assassination which like that's just classic racism right yeah yeah again this is why like i was like this has some real post 9 11 vibes oh yeah the suicide note they stick in his pocket yeah. that's all like oh i'm gonna have my 72 virgins and live in the shadow of allah and yeah <laughs> i do like the scene where like they're setting up for the assassination because they just like have a plastic grocery bag that the guy pulls like <laughs> sniper rifle out of yeah and then he goes into this like little box to like shoot him from like not bust out the glass and shoot him from yeah he basically went into miller, like the it, end cap from a grocery store yeah. and shot him from underneath like a, the stands a miller like a miller beer ad after he does that when gary Smee shoots him someone else comes up with another grocery bag that he pulls his gun out of <laughs> like i'm pretty sure you have a gun buddy you think you're i didn't even notice that oh, i yeah. feel like i was so distracted with this movie it's the extra plot you got to keep your ballistics clean yeah. mm, good point I did notice after he kills his cohorts, like the cleanup crew, they're putting them in tubes and the whole end credits is them putting up the concrete pillars. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of a cool touch. Well, uh, and then at the end, you see like the woman's ring like on the outside. I'm like, eh, I felt clever. And you just had to go and throw it out there. Speaking <laughs> of the, I mean, they showed them lowering a body into the forms when Nick Cage yeah, was beat up. That's what I meant. So. Yeah. Also, just like. As much as I enjoy watching construction workers work, eh, I've made a living out of it, but it was the most awkward credits of just watching. It reminded me of uh, the whitest kid, you know, um, Jaws skip. Oh. <laughs> just the slow close up. <laughs> Do you know that one, Peter? I don't. We're going to watch it after. And yeah, then okay. I'll, here, imagine yeah. me laughing. <laughs> yeah, we'll watch it after. I won't ruin it for you. <laughs> but so Nick Cage gets Don't to mock me. the informant first, <laughs> hides her in bay doors. Yeah. So at, at, at one point when I was watching this, like, I think I went into a fugue state and I did not see any of her going into this room that she is locked in. Because later they cut to her and I'm like, the fuck is this? Yeah, he takes her there. Yeah, he puts her in there. It's like it looks like it's built to be. I think it's a loading dock or. 
<laughs> it's like a storage room, but with weirdly high security. And they're storing weird shit in there, too, like fake missiles and stuff because of what it's going to be. It has like missile decorations and yeah. shit, but it's it's really, really weird. And it's just like one sheet of corrugated metal. There's no insulation, no like wall or anything separating it from outside because we get something that like flies through it near the end in the hurricane. So, yes, Nick Cage figures out Gary Sinise is uh, being the bad guy. You should have just looked at his face. Yeah, know, such a dumb but, face. Like, finds proof. Gary Sinise destroys the proof, but then like takes Cage, has the boxer heavyweight champion beat him up for the information. So Nick Cage is just like all fucked up. Like <laughs> he can't talk big, for shit. Like big fucked up, like a big old goose face. eggs. Like <laughs> you're gonna edit that in earlier, and I'm gonna sound like an asshole. We're talking about <laughs> other things. <laughs> don't don't tempt me with a good time. Um so he uh wakes up from his pummeling and goes to uh goes to like find the girl and Gary Sinise is following him. The hurricane is picking up. <laughs> In this whole movie I'm like, why is there a hurricane again? For this very next scene. There's lightning outside and every time there's lightning, you can see Gary Sinise's shadow behind Nick Cage. So like with a gun. So Nick Cage turns around and is like, I'm not gonna tell you. Nick Cage finally goes in there with with her. At this time, there is a reporter outside. There's a big sphere that starts rolling down the street that fell off the building. At the same time, a cop van is rolling up the other side, swerves out of the way of the big sphere into the double doors, just in time to catch Gary Sinise before he murders everybody. Yeah, perfect timing. Like some little, like, real Deus Ex mocking it'll wrap that story up. <laughs> Everything in this movie is so planned out. Yeah. And then they get to the end, and they're just like, I don't fucking know. A cop van punches through the wall. And then Gary Sinise kills himself in the dumbest way, but he just kind of shoot himself through, like, I guess he probably hit his lung, but that wouldn't have been instant. Yeah. I don't know. It was very unsatisfying. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, oh and, man, and, and his stupid, cut. dumb face and his stupid, dumb voice is yeah. like, oh, but the, they're a murderer. Oh, they, they killed. Ah, oh. and then like he's standing there with his Schmitz. fucking handgun with yeah. like a silencer. foot long silencer on it. <laughs> and the cops are all like, uh, fucking shut up. You with the gun. <laughs> Why don't you get on the ground? You with that gun for murder. <laughs> yeah, you murder weaponer. So <laughs> the Nick Cage hero cop all these reports about this big hero cop and then the movie remembers wait he was a piece of shit so he has his come up and come immediately <laughs> yeah he gets a lot of accolades and uh, then you see him like getting swarmed by cops while he's jumping into his yellow ferrari or whatever and all of his corruption stings and everything come out and uh then, then the, he goes to jail well and then the movie then he meets up with the informant again at the end who they have had no chemistry in this movie and then she's all like, I don't know. She took her glasses off at least one time. Yeah. At the very beginning. When and they, they were broken. And they broke. <laughs> and then she couldn't see shit for the whole movie. <laughs> that's but why then, she likes him. Yeah. Well, that's but fair. then like she meets up and is like, or she's like, do you have a wife? And she ran away. Oh, you have a girlfriend? And she ran away too. And it's like, I don't know. But like, you know, if you're free in 12 to 18 months, if you want to like get a drink, she's like, I'd like that. Yeah. He and says he's headed upstate for yeah. a while. And she's like, yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> And then she catches on. It's like, oh, oh, yeah. The pen. But yeah. And then they're like, and then they share a kiss and the movie ends. And yeah. the most unsatisfying, like, none of that. Like, a solid first half that just immediately falls apart. So, Nick, where do you put this? Good cage, bad cage, bad cage, good cage. Bad cage, good movie, good cage. Bad movie, bad, good, bad, good, bad. I think I this is to a be good pretty at mediocre cage. So I guess it falls to, like, just not a good cage. He started out so strong, and he had elements where he really connected to the script that yeah. I liked, but it was super inconsistent, I felt, uh, especially near the end. Uh, he just kind of got flat, unlike yeah. his face, which was real bulbous -y. <laughs> I mean, it was fine, but, you, I mean, the audience knows what's going on so early that I just stopped. Yeah. It's like, oh, OK, well, I know minus one or two little details what the whole conceit of this is. So I'll just sit here and, ultimately, and I'll get to the end. It doesn't matter why he did it. To yeah. The, to the audience. No, it doesn't. Yeah. So I would also kind of agree. Mediocre performance by Cage with a lot of highs, but a lot of lows. So just kind of middle middling performance and not good movie. Yeah. 
But you got to hear him do like mush mouth, beat up face talking <laughs> at the end. That's a character actor, baby. <laughs> I don't think he went out on the weekends and like got beat up just might have. for the method acting. Well, just it to played figure off out. later in Pig when he gets beat up. <laughs> <True>. <laughs> He's been working his whole career just trying to figure out how to get beat up. Yeah. Do you guys have quotes? My quote comes from when uh, Nick Cage is in the stairwell and he's talking to Julia and she's told him that it was done that or she saw kill everybody. Yeah. Like Dunn was the one he was waiting there to kill the terrorists he's involved. And she's just like, look, I'm I'm sorry. And Rick's like, who gives a shit if you're sorry? She's like, are you mad at or what are you mad at me for? He's just like, because I didn't have to know. You decided to have the this problem, not me. My world would have gone turn gone on turning just fine. But now, either way I look, I have to do something I don't want to do. Do you understand? I do not want to do this. Because he has to go arrest his friend. Yeah. yeah. Or line. ignore murders. Right. Yeah. So he's kind of stuck in a uh, rock and a hard place sort of situation. Mine was uh, from like when he's all coked out at the beginning and Dunn's telling him, he's like, you know, come into private security, make more money, get his you know son out of there. Tell him. Tell oh, yeah, him this is his son. You know, yeah, you know, don't don't make Michael grow up here. It's not a beach town anymore. It's a sewer. But it's my sewer, Jiminy. And I love it. In six square blocks, everybody knows me. I got the whole town wired. If, if I manage to get my face on TV a few times, maybe I'll run for mayor or something. But that's as far as I want to go. Because I was made for this sewer, baby. And I am the king. Yeah. His, I loved his character in the beginning. Yeah. He had just cool energy. He was a slime ball. But he was Great never jacket. like a bad person. He just wasn't on the level. I don't know. He did shake down a Guzman for money so he could like give a good. <laughs> Somebody's got to get paid. But so he tries to make it. I want my like twenty dollar tip. <laughs> well, I don't think this is going to be a big surprise question, but what movie moves on? This is Primal. the weird category, right? Oh. <laughs> this is um. We didn't, we didn't yeah, say that. Yeah, it's the, the end of yeah, fucking is... weird. Yeah, this is our last five. I think it has to be the weirder weird. film. Yeah, it, it does have to be that one. It's also the better film. Willy's, Willy's Wonderland. Wonderland. Ooh, we nailed that speaking together. Well, last, suck a dick. Suck a dick. <laughs> last thoughts? No, suck a toe. Oh, suck a toe. Suck a toe. Suck a toe. Suck a toe. Sounds like a, that sounds like a town in Washington. Suck a toe. Suck a toe. Yeah. Well, fuck, man. We did it. We uh, got through season one. 32 whole episodes, baby. Let's do it episodes. again. Let's do it all again. Yeah, absolutely. From the top. Oh, God, no. Fuck you. Um, but yeah, thank you all for listening and, uh, <laughs> stick with us for season two. We're going to have a little bit of an interim. I think what we're going to do is, um, a bit of a wrap up episode. I'm only and... mad about one movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're both mad that primal didn't move on and it's a fucking shame. It hurts. It hurts every day. We'll figure out how to retcon it in the next episode. We are but also we'll going to, uh, record a special bonus episode for the retirement plan, which was supposed to come out on the 28th of August and now is coming out on the 15th of September. Maybe in theaters, maybe not. We're going to find out. We'll record something for that. And then we've got a couple little one-off episodes for you all with some old friends of ours. And beyond that, Stay tuned season for season two. two. Yeah. Ooh, I have a fun little anecdote before we leave today. Yeah, please. At my morning stand-up, one of the members of the marketing team, their theme was like, what is a brand you are loyal to? And it came to me. And I'm like, can a person be a brand? And they're like, sure. And I'm like, cool. This won't surprise anyone on my team, but the rest of you, I am the biggest Nick Cage fan. And the man still puts out quality work and I will watch anything he's in. I thought you would have said like Kirkland Sparkle Buddies. <laughs> yeah. This is sponsored by Kirkland Brand Sparkle Buddies. <laughs> Speaking of, thank you for your support to our Sparkle Buddies. Josh, Sean, Josie, Rico, Matt, and Adam. What was that thing you just did? What? A segue? <laughs> I don't think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and to our cage dancers, Ira, John, Freeman, and Lance. If anyone wants to support us on Patreon, we are available at Cage Match. If you want to shoot the shit with us on Reddit or tell us that we're dumb, which most people do, uh, we are at Cage Match Pod. And we're also on Instagram, Twitter, etc. Find us. Look for Nick and Sean's faces. You know them well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. This has been a blast. Thanks for taking this ride with us.
It's not done, so don't give up on us. Yeah. It sounds like we're all dying or something. We might. Well, we might be. I don't know. A little. We're inside. all dying. Every day is a little closer to death. You guys want to do a uh, satanic cult? Yeah. What, cool. are, what are we trying to? Uh, oh, we're, our souls we're gonna put ourselves oh. into the mics and then we'll will the mics to Hayden. My soul is gonna go into that lava lamp right there, and it's just gonna be like dick shapes all the time. <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. I'm just, yeah, I'm just looking around the room. I'm like, there's not a lot of options in here. I guess I could be a haunted lamp. That'd be cool. Ooh, yeah. Oh, you wanted light, bitch? Guess what? <laughs> Turning off. Yo, haunted haunted NES. That way, people have to blow on me all the time. <laughs> You're just an NES that moans. Bye-bye. <laughs> <sighs> 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 <sighs>